What's up guys, it's Trent and Allie with Bully Barn. Today we're going to talk about buying a dog with flaws. All dogs have flaws. I just want to start off by saying that uh, no dog is perfect. Um, you can breed a grand champion to a grand champion uh, and both of the grandparents and sets of parents of those grand champions could be grand champions and you're still going to have flaws, guys. All dogs have flaws. I could pick every single grand champion apart, every single one of them. And some of that is uh, the breeding and the uh, show ring, I will say that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, some of the dogs that they're, you know, champing out and grand champing, I don't believe actually should be grand champions or champions. I think more or less they're just nice breeding tools. Still great dogs, but I don't think that they are champion or grand champion material. Um, and that's just me being strict and just pointing out the obvious. I mean, you can't deny the fact that 95% of the breed does have high rears. And I know that, you know, as breeders, we're trying to breed away from that. But it is kind of hard to do that when most of the dogs that we are using and most of the dogs that are in every single bit of our pedigrees have high rears. Um, so you're not going to have a perfect dog. There's just a lot of things that cause the high rear. Um, there can be a uh, long thigh, long hawk, uh, straight stifle, um, bad shoulder lay. And because of that... Short upper arms. Yeah, the things stack on top of, <coughs> top of each other, and that's what causes that high rear. And that's why... Well, that, it's not then, one thing that causes it. That's no, why it's multiple falls all that make, can make it worse, too. And it's like... If you have a dog's front end and a dog's back end, they're supposed to be in balance with each other. The angulation of the shoulder is supposed to match the angulation of the rear. And if those match and they're in balance, that dog moves effortlessly and it stays in balance in movement. <clears throat> and if, you know, you're breeding a bunch of extreme, really extreme dogs that have a lot of bulldog features, and that's where a lot of that stuff comes from, you know, but that's just how the breed is. But, you know, if you if you keep breeding flaws like that, you know, what you're going to end up with is the more you do it and the more you do it, the more consistent it's going to be. The more dominant those flaws are going to be there. They're gonna be locked and in. they're going to be locked in. It's going to take, you know, quite a few generations to get rid of those flaws. So, you know, if you have a dog that does have a short upper arm, guess what? Boom. You're a little bit shorter. If you got a dog that's, you know, has weak pasterns, boom, a little bit shorter in the front end. And all that does is make it look like the rear is even higher. Even if you have good angulation in the rear, you know, even if you have a nice length of all your uh, your hawk and your thigh and all that stuff, all the angles and stuff are good in the rear. You know, if that front end is, you know, low like that, if you've got weak pasterns or, you know, a, a short upper arm, a bad shoulder set, all those things can cause that front to be low. And then if you, on top of that, if you are <clears throat> stiff in the rear, if you have, if you, if you lack angulation, boom, there goes your rear even higher. If you've got a long uh, thigh, boom. If you've got a long hawk, boom. So that, you know, that's why these dogs are so out of balance and why there's so many high rears. That has a lot to do with it. Yeah. Um, and all the dogs that we breed, you know, all these dogs have, most of these pedigrees and stuff all have high rears. All the dogs in the pedigrees all have high rears. Even the grand champ, every grand champion pretty much has a high rear. <coughs> Especially like, the top 10. I feel like that's something that um, <clears throat> that most of the bully community is worried about too. Is they're like, I don't want a high rear when it's, which you definitely don't want it. But I feel like that's the most common flaw that everyone is concerned about when there's definitely other flaws. Well, other flaws make up the high rear, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then sure. also like <clears throat> Cowhawk and East-West. And there's other flaws that are super important that you need to watch out for, too. Yeah. But everyone's like, I want to see that top line. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really not... everyone cares about. Top line's really not all that matters. And a lot of people don't understand... You got to know what causes the mm -hmm. top line. What's and a lot it. of people don't understand that... You know, the dog, just because the dog has a good top line in a picture, you know, doesn't mean that that dog actually has a good top line. It means, could mean that somebody's over-angulating that dog a bunch. They're squatting. on, that's why you see, yeah, you'll see them squatting. Downhill. If you see right at the top of their hawk, you'll see little wrinkles and you can tell that they're squatting, which, you know, you can't blame handlers and people taking pictures of their dogs for doing that because, 
you know, they're going to present their dog in the them? best light and show, yeah, they're trying to show their dog in the best form that they can. And you can't blame breeders for taking pictures of their puppies and stuff that look good like that as well, because that's what we're going to do. We're going to present our stuff the best we can. Um, but, uh, what was I, what was I saying right before that? Right before the, uh, we were, I just went off track a little bit, but right before I was talking about, uh, um, presenting. Yes. We were talking about um, <coughs> the other flaws in the top line and oh, everything yeah. that causes it. Yeah, so, you know, that's also why you see a lot of dogs that have the uh, pictures when they're downhill. Mm -hmm. And if and a lot of people are really good at hiding it, but you can actually see that the rear is, you know, downhill a little bit or on a sloped uh, surface. So it makes that top line look better. And, you know, in the show ring, you don't get that. You're getting flat concrete. That's mm -hmm. it on a mat. You know, that's it. So you were also talking about um, angulation and motion compared to stacking. That's where you were going with it about how in a stack you can. Oh, yeah. And stuff. Yeah. In a stack, when you stack a dog, if a handler is really good, they can actually squat that dog, you know, and they've got a control of their head so they can lift their head up a little bit, kind of help take a little bit of weight off those front pasterns where they don't where the fronts don't look as weak. They don't, they don't look as bad. Um, you can turn front legs and stuff and stack the dog and you, you know, you're trying to manipulate the, the look of the overall dog to the judge. So, you know, you're presenting that dog in its best light, mm -hmm. you know, in its best form. Pleasing to the eye. Yeah. Pleasing to the eye. And, uh, but anyway, a lot of times, as soon as you see a dog go out of a stack into a, a gate, that's when you start to see where the dog's unbalanced, you know, where you see, <coughs> where you see that the dog has you know, a stiff rear. If, if that rear is really, really stiff, you'll see stifles that are really straight. The rear will be high. The back will be trying to catch up to the front end. You know, you'll kind of see, you'll, you'll kind of see the dog. <clears throat> That's why movement such a big deal. Uh, it's just in move, especially in movement. You'll kind of see the dog's rear end trying to catch up at the front end. If they're <clears throat> out of balance. Kind of in a way. And it's all about, yeah, it is all about balance. It's about, you know, drive from the rear end and reach from the front end. If your dog is, uh, has too much angulation, you know, your dog might be a little choppy in the front end and have to overreach, you know, in order to compensate for the too much angulation in the rear. And it's all about balance. I mean, you can get into all that stuff and, you know, there's a lot more people that know a lot more about the overall movement and structure of a dog. There's specialists and stuff out there that literally study this stuff for years. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, and our breed is, is so young too, you know, what, 28 to 30 years or so they've been around. So it, you know, mixing these bull breeds, that's, I mean, that's what it is. You're mixing these bull breeds together. You're going to get a lot of inconsistency, especially with structure and everything else, especially when everybody's starting to try to breed towards this bullier dog. Mm -hmm. And, uh, which I mean, I like a bully dog too. Everybody does, you know, that's why, that's why all the breeders are breeding for it. You know, we love a nice bully dog, but at what point, you know, does that bulliness, you know, kind of like, compensate or compromise uh, structure for that bully yeah. for the bulliness you know what i mean um so anyway you know when you see when you see these dogs like i said when you're buying dog when you're buying a pup or whatever no matter what breeder you're buying from you're buying a dog with flaws you could buy a dog that ends up being a show dog and i will say this not every dog is going to be a show dog guys not every dog will be a show dog um yes there is you know quite a few dogs that are you know good quality dogs good breeders doing good jobs with breedings and there's sure there's show dogs out there but i'll tell you one thing those show dogs aren't perfect just because they're a show dog mm -hmm. does not mean they're perfect <clears throat> so and if you're new into this you know if you're planning on breeding and you're new to this if you don't if you have not looked at the breed standard you haven't studied just what the dog's supposed to look like and then understand and go look at like confirmation and understand yeah, if you can't break a dog down and actually understand the overall structure of a dog and how they are supposed to move, you know, you should not be breeding dogs. You shouldn't be breeding dogs unless until you go and learn that and just learn the basics of like breaking down a dog structure and understanding what that dog lacks, you should not be breeding guys. Um, you should be, you should just have a pet, you know, and that's, that's, you know, that's the hard truth, but it's true. Um, but I mean, as far as buying a pup, if you're trying to start a kennel or whatever else, or you're, or you're already a breeder and you're trying to, you know, get something else in your yard, bring some other blood in, you know, do some research, uh, on your, uh, 
breeder that you're buying from look in their yard look at ask for pictures videos and whatnot and just like look at their pedigrees and see what's there because this breed is so young you're never going to get nothing perfect mm -mm. that's just all there is to it there's you're going to buy dogs that are cow hawk you're going to buy dogs that are easy westy grand champions are cow hawk and easy westy yeah all day every day all the time and you know and like i said that's a whole nother subject we'll talk about some now, some other almost time all of them have high rears yep. too there's exactly 95 percent of the breed has high rears so do your research look and see what these dogs are supposed to look like confirmationally and do your best ability to choose one of the pups off a of litter that has minimal flaws and then when you go to breed that dog just make sure that you are not doubling up on those flaws and breed away from the flaws <coughs> if you're picking a dog excuse me um other factors besides the flaws is make sure you're getting like the blood you like and um, you're going to a good breeder and then of course then you can be like hey I want the least amount of flaws possible this is what my goal is and I mean a good breeder is going to be aiming for that too when they have the vision for the litter they're going to uh, mm. have the male and female that they feel like complement each other the best but the male and female are going to have flaws yep because the whole breed does so what you want to do as a breeder is you want to find <coughs> the male and female that complement each other you're not doubling up on any of the flaws you don't want to lock those in on the puppies and so when you're looking for a puppy you want to look at the male and female look at those pictures and videos you're asking for and see if the flaw is being repeated throughout see if it's being repeated from the grandparents and if it's locked in because if so if it's uh. locked in that's something that you're most likely going to get, and you need to be you're gonna prepared have to, for that. Yeah, be prepared, and you're going to possibly just, just get another puppy. That, yeah, just know that when you breed that dog, that dog's probably going to throw those same flaws. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just part of it. And like I said, you're not, you're never going to buy a perfect dog from me. I guarantee you that. You're never going to buy a perfect dog from anybody. Like I said, I can pick these grand champions Even apart. Even like all the big names, yep. they're trying. Mm -hmm. We're trying, and that's all you can do. You can just yep. try your just best. Not, not the that standard. there's not really nice dogs out there. There's tons of awesome looking dogs mm -hmm. out there. Super nice dogs, but they're not perfect, you know. So don't expect perfection, and don't breed. If you're going to pay for a stud fee, you know, say you pay five, six thousand dollars for a stud fee. Understand this: you're not going to get a whole litter full of bombs you're, that are just perfect. You know, you're going to get some grenades in there. It just that's how it goes, especially if you know the dogs don't complement each other and stuff. Uh, and breeding is tricky. It's all scientific. It's all, you know, it's all trial and error when you're breeding and stuff. Um, but as far as buying a dog, just understand that you're going to buy a dog with flaws. Every dog has flaws. And that's the main part of this video. And I've seen a few people posting lately about, you know, nobody's got a first pick available. Like, what? Uh, who has a first pick I can buy? Just because you're buying a first pick from somebody, first off, doesn't mean that you're going to be getting a nice dog, you know? But if you're buying from a breeder and you're like, oh, they're letting me have first pick, like that doesn't mean that you're going to get a nice dog. It depends on what how that breeding is, mm -hmm. what's put together to make that breeding so great, if it is great. And if it is so great, why is the breeder not keeping something off of it? You know, that's a huge deal. For me, you know, I'm going to breed and have a purpose when I breed. So if somebody's out there consistently selling first picks, chances are they're not happy with what they're breeding because they're not keeping anything to better their yard. Or they just want the money. Um, yeah, and so, you know, to expect breeders to, to give up first picks, like, no, you're not getting first picks. You know, nine times out of ten, <coughs> you're not going to get a first pick out of the litter. It's just not going to happen. I mean, breeders are keeping those dogs to better their yard, you know, generation after generation, and that's a big deal. So... And don't be discouraged just because of that. You can buy second, third, even fourth yeah, picks. Yeah, and still have great yep. dogs. We've done it. Yep. <clears throat> and we've done the opposite. We've chose a first mm -hmm. pick male that we thought was going to be absolutely amazing. And then, you know, did turn out really yeah, nice. Really nice dog. But the second pick male was, a little, bit nicer. was a little bit better. And he's a champion now, um, which is Champion Joshua. You guys can go check him out. Bully Barnes Champion Joshua. Uh, shout out to... Uh, Saved by Grace Kennels, some of our good friends here in Oklahoma. Super great people. He's a bad boy. Absolutely stunning. About 80 pounds, uh, 24 and a half inch head. Um, super great structure and movement. I mean, he's just a, he's he's a, a nice lilac bull. pie bulb. Yeah, he's just a nice bull. Just stunning. Um, so go give them a shout or go give them a like. Uh, uh, go hop on their page. Follow them. Go look at him. Go check Mostly him out. on Facebook. So yeah. Follow them on Facebook. Um, but anyway, so back to that, he turned out nicer 
than our first pick mill. And sometimes that happens, but don't be discouraged just because you can't buy a first or second no. pick. Our amazing Rory, girl, yeah. Rory. Rory is a third pick female. A third pick female. And we took we took her to the ring when she was seven and a half months old, I believe. And she took home yeah. four was it four first place? I think or so. three. Three first place and an and a reserve. reserve. Yeah, three first place ribbons and a reserve mm -hmm. at one show down in Mesquite, Texas. <clears throat> so don't be discouraged. You know, don't be scared to get a third pick. Uh, I know a guy that has a third pick male that uh, is a champion now. I know another guy that actually was going to sell this dog, sell a dog that he has. And uh, at the time, he was five months old. And this is a while back. Uh, he actually put him up for sale, you know, because he wasn't turning out like he wanted. And then didn't end up selling him and now he's a grand champion mm -hmm. so you just never know you know these especially when pups are young you just don't know how they're gonna turn out well we're not perfect either and we're selling these dogs when they're a little bit young and i'm saying we as like the breeders but we don't always make the perfect pick we no. go into it and we're like well they we change know that just the parents like, have just like these us. flaws and we're expecting this but we don't see it and, <clears> let's, <throat> and then sometimes something comes out from three generations back yep. that you just don't expect because the breed is so inconsistent it's new it's a new young breed yep and but anyway that's pretty much it really i mean i think we covered basically everything on that yeah. buying a buying a dog of falls you're gonna buy a dog of falls if you're breeding just make sure that you're not doubling up on that same fall breed away from it and do your best and keep dogs every generation to better your program study 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 research mm -hmm. everything you can about these dogs about structure complimenting and, each other yep, about dogs complimenting each other learn uh, learn about functions of how a dog's uh that is imbalanced moves well you know that that moves effortlessly mm -hmm. a well-balanced dog will move effortlessly and just it just looks naturally better you can tell when you see a dog that's really nicely well balanced you can really tell um just like the bus or the bear both of those dogs uh go google or search uh grand champion the bus or grand champion the bear both of those dogs you see in movement beautiful movement and they stack up beautifully they have nice balance throughout the front matches the rear there are just you know, in sync with each other and the dog moves effortlessly. You can tell. And that's what I'm talking about. But the point of the video is you're not going to get a perfect dog. Even when you're, even, even when we produce dogs off of grand champions, we're not getting perfect dogs. It's just not going to happen. Even if you get a show dog, it will not be a perfect dog. It may be a show dog, but it won't be a perfect dog. And that's just the point of this video. Yeah. You know, you're not going to get the perfect dog guys. That's all there is to it. Uh, if you guys have anything else you want to talk about, uh, shoot us a little comment down below uh don't forget to like uh subscribe if you want to follow us on instagram at bully.barn that's b-u-l-l-y dot b-a-r-n uh you can text me whatever 405-568-6846 i'm trent this is allison guys any other topics you guys want to talk about just hit us up and maybe we can make a video about it and and you know have a discussion on that as well yeah yep you guys Thank have a good you. one bye Thank <laughs> you.